The Nintendo Wii offers a very unique gaming experience with its full motion sensing and infrared based pointing system letting you use your body's motion to control the game. This does need extra hardware, but for a very modest outlay you can get the full Wii experience on your PC. Let me show you how. Hi and welcome to Bites and Bits. I was recently putting together a sort of media centre for my son's bedroom, uh, moving up an old TV and DVD player, and I noticed that we still had our old Nintendo Wii console plugged into the back of that TV. And this got me thinking, um, is it possible to play some of the old Wii games using an emulator on my PC? Now, if you're not familiar with the Nintendo Wii, it was one of the first consoles to use motion sensing in its controllers um, to allow the machine to sense the orientation of the handset. Um, it also had an innovative infrared camera system so that it could also see where you were pointing the handset and to give you some basic 3D spatial measurements. Now, basically, there was a sensor bar that you placed either above or below your TV screen and this had some infrared LEDs at either end of it, and the camera at the end of the Wii Remote was able to see these. So measuring the distance between these two IR sources um, gave a measurement of the depth, and the position and alignment of the dots in the camera's field of view told the Wii where the remote was pointing and what rotation angle it was being held in. Now all of this meant that the Wii was able to combine both traditional um, button and joystick controls with this motion and pointing sensing to create some very original gameplay. So in this video I'm going to show you how we can emulate this complete Wii experience using your PC. Now for this you, you are going to need to buy some specialist parts as your normal controllers just won't give the full Wii experience. Now there are some games that you can play with something like an Xbox controller, but you will be missing out on the whole point of gaming on the Wii. So to get a full Wii setup, you're going to need a Wii Remote, which is also sometimes called a Wii Mote. And you're also going to need the nunchuck attachment and then a USB powered sensor bar. Your PC also needs to have Bluetooth because um, the Wii Remote is a Bluetooth device. So if you haven't got that built in, you'll need to get hold of a Bluetooth dongle. Now you can easily pick up all of these um, bits and pieces on, on Amazon or eBay. Um, the Wii Remotes retail for around 30 to 40 pounds for a compatible one, including the Nunchuck. Um, the original Nintendo devices are a bit more expensive, but, but to be honest, as long as you get a fully compatible remote, it's going to work fine. The original Wii sensor bar works off a 19 volts power supply from the back of the Wii console, so you won't be able to easily reuse this. But you can build your own by simply connecting up a few infrared LEDs to an old USB cable. Um, if, if you are going to go this route, do make sure to use um, 940 nanometer um, infrared LEDs, uh, as these will give you the best output. And you need to put at least three of them at either end of your sensor bar. But, but to be honest though, um, by the time you've bought some LEDs, hacked up a USB cable and made some sort of mounting bar for the whole thing, you're probably going to be better off just buying a ready-made one. Um, they retail for only about £10, which is about how much it's going to cost you to buy all the bits. And that would get you a professionally made bar that looks exactly like the original um, Nintendo Wii version. And it also comes with a neat little mount so that you can place it wherever you need quite easily. Now, if, if you go to Amazon or eBay, you, you'll see these cheaper, simple USB sensor bars, but you'll probably also come across a, a more expensive version called the Mayflash Dolphin Bar. Now, now, these come in at around about £30, and they do actually offer quite a few more features than the simple USB LED version. Um, 
But having said that, if you're just going to be using this um, to play Wii games, um, I, I, I don't really see the advantage in the Mayfish bar itself. It, it does allow you then to use your Wii remote as, as a mouse and so on, and it, it can be a bit more reliable in getting a connection. But to be honest, I, I haven't had any problems at all with any of my setups. So I'm gonna be sticking to this simpler USB option in this video. Again, for all of these parts, um, please do check the links below um, to make it easy to get hold of them from either Amazon or eBay. So now that you've got all the bits, um, we need to get the actual emulator up and running. So the Dolphin emulator, um, which is the one we're going to be using, lets you turn your PC into both a Wii and a Nintendo GameCube. So, so the Wii was actually fully compatible with GameCube games and the, and the two systems are very closely related. So you can download the Dolphin emulator from, from this web address and again I'll put all of these links and information in the descriptions down below. So if you go to the home page you'll find the download link which takes you to the downloads page. Now for, for Dolphin you want to install the latest development build. There are some stable releases, but if you do look a look, take a look at the timestamps, you'll find that these are actually a few years old and they're not going to work with all of the resources that we'll be finding online to get our games up and running. So download the latest development build and that will come down as a simple archive file. And you just need to extract all of its contents into a suitable folder on your hard drive. So if you've been using uh, LaunchBox, um, put, put it into a Dolphin folder inside your emulators folder, just to make sure that that keeps everything portable. Of course, you'll then have to attach it to your LaunchBox installation, but, but I'll, I'll cover all of that LaunchBox setup in another video. So once you've extracted Dolphin, um, we're actually ready to go and play some games. Now, as usual, um, you're gonna be on your own when it comes to getting hold of your Wii games. So if you've got some dumps of your original game discs, um, these will work great. Um, otherwise, as per usual, um, Google's going to help you find some games that you can get hold of. Now, do note that if you do have some original game DVDs, um, they're not actually going to work in your PC. You, you do need to find a, a dump of that as a, as a file that we can load in. If you do have the DVDs uh, and you still have your Wii console, there is actually a way where you can make your own backup files, um, but it is slightly involved. Uh, and I will cover that then in a separate section where we will actually hack the, the real Wii console to, to make that able to play um, backup games and also make your own backups of, of your games. But again, I will have to cover that in, in a separate video. So when you do manage to get hold of some Wii games, you'll find that they will come in a range of formats, um, from plain um, ISO um, DVD dumps um, to compressed end kit files and, and, and so on. There, there's a range of file options they come in at. Uh, but, but Dolphin, you'll find, is very good at handling most of these formats. Um, so you'll pretty much find that everything will work. Again, making sure that you use the latest development build. Um, the, the, latest, the last stable build does not really cope well with some of the file types you will find out there. Now, if you do happen to find a file that Dolphin can't recognize, again, as I said, make sure, first of all, that you are using the latest development build. But, but if that doesn't work, then, then I'm afraid these are ways to simply just see if you can find another version of that game um, in another file format. Now, as you um, download your games, um, the best idea here is to put them all into a, a single Wii games folder. So, so Dolphin needs to be told what folders you're going to use for your games files. So having them all in the one place will make it easier. And again, if you're using LaunchBox, you can use the Wii folder in the um, LaunchBox games folder. So to start Dolphin, you simply need to browse to where you extracted your emulator and find the Dolphin.exe file and, and double click that to start it. 
Now when you first boot up Dolphin, it won't know about any of your games. So first we need to tell it where the game files are stored. So click on the config icon and then select the paths tab. If you click the add button and find your Wii games folder, you can then select that. And then once you close the settings dialog, you should see a list of games building up inside of the Dolphin emulator. Now these games are now ready to run. But before we can run a game, we first of all have to set up our Wii Remote and our sensor bar. So to get your Wii controller connected to your PC, you need to click on the controllers icon on the Dolphin main screen. And in this dialog box, um, if you have a look at the top, it um, shows you the GameCube controllers. And again, we can just really just leave those as they are. Um, but we now need to set up the Wii Remote section. So make sure that you've selected Emulate Bluetooth Adapter and set at least the first Wii Remote, so Remote number one drop down to be a real Wii. Now, if you have more Wii controllers, you can add these at a later time, as I do suggest that you start by just getting a single remote up and running so that we know that everything is working and everything can talk together. Similarly, if you've got a Wii balance board, um, you'll see that there is a checkbox here to allow you to connect that. Um, but again, in this first setup, I, I just leave that off for now. So you'll also want to check the enable speaker data. Um, the handset has a small speaker built into it so that the console can send it some sounds. You want to leave the connect Wii remotes for emulator controllers box unchecked, but you do want to check the continuous scanning box so that Dolphin will actively search for any Wii remotes. So once you've got all that selected, Press the one and two buttons on your Wii Remote and it should start flashing its blue LEDs. And this means that it has gone into pairing mode. So after about 10 to 20 seconds, it should vibrate and show a single blue LED. And this means that it has successfully connected to your PC. Now, if, if it doesn't connect, um, simply go back and press the one and two buttons again, and also um, click the refresh button on the Dolphin emulator. It, that, that's, of course, if it's not greyed out. So sometimes it just takes a couple of goes to get it all connected. And by the way, do make sure that your Wii console, if you have one, is turned off or that it's out of range. Otherwise, your Wii Mote will end up connecting to that instead of your PC. So lastly, we need to set a few Wii config settings. So again, click on the config icon and then select the Wii tab. So the top section of this should all be set up, but you can make some changes here for different games. Now the important bits that we want to look at are at the bottom. So, so usually you'll place your sensor bar along the top or bottom edge of your screen. And, and this is where we can tell Dolphin where you've put it and that allows it to adjust itself to make the pointing feel more accurate. Now you can also adjust the sensitivity of your sensor bar, so if your tracking gets a little bit patchy at times, you can fine tune it here for better performance. Also in here, we can adjust the handset speaker volume and turn on and off the handset rumble feature, which makes it vibrate when, when certain things happen inside a game. Now the last bit of pressure preparation we need to do is to set the emulator settings. So if you click on the graphics icon and then select the general tab in the dialog, the basic settings here, um, first of all, I would advise you try out the Vulkan backend um, and, and also make sure that you've got the right GPU selected and then tick the start in full screen box. Now this, this should be all you need, um, but as you can see there are a lot of other options in here which you can have a go at tweaking uh, and that, that will help you make um, and help you get the best performance out of your particular PC hardware. Now if you're on a more powerful machine, you, you can change the display render quality on the enhancements tab and that will give you smoother graphics. But again, this is entirely up to you. I, I tend to prefer to leave them at the native console resolution, and that just gives me a more authentic console feel. But once that's all set up, um, then it really is just time to play the games. 
So we've done all of the hard work and all we need to do now is go back to the Dolphin main screen, select a game and then click play. This should start your game up in full screen mode, again if you've ticked that box in, in, in the Wii section, and your Wii Remote should work as if you were sat in front of a real Wii console. Fifteen love. So that's a fully working Wii up and running on your PC. Now it has taken a couple of bits of extra hardware, but the Wii is, is such a unique playing experience that I do think it's, it's more than worth it for this small outlay. And, and even better, if, if you've got some old weary remotes lying around, then of course the only thing you've got to shell out for is that sensor bar. And doing all of this then will give you access to the full Wii catalogue, so you can sample some of the games you've missed if you had a Wii console the first time round. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please do click that like and subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Make sure you check out the project page on my bitesandbits.co.uk website and I'll put all links to that and any of the websites and, and things that we've been using in, in, the, in this video in that description as well. So have fun playing all these fantastic Wii games. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.